Hi everybody, um, I thought I'd put together a little uh, video tour of my new watch winder because uh, several people have asked me what a watch winder is and how it works and why we would need one. Um, so this is my, my watch, it's, a, it's an automatic watch, uh, it's got no battery inside and there's a small uh, counterweight inside that spins around with the movement of your arm and that charges the uh, mechanism and it can hold energy in there and that's what makes the watch turn, uh, the, the, the needles turn. Now the only problem is that there's only about 42 hours of reserve power in the watch and so um, on the weekends when I take my watch off, the watch dies at 3 a.m. Sunday morning every time. So that compelled me to want to solve the problem. Now I could buy a watch winder online for like $29.99, like $29.99, but uh, I wanted to do a little bit of a project here. So I built this watch winder. Um, the uh, outer structure is made of 8020 uh, extruded aluminum. Um, and all this 8020 was cut at the 8020 factory. And I have the front plate machine at 8020 as well. So the device is basically just a machine that rotates this watch around and around and around, which charges the mechanism when I'm not wearing it. Uh, so I'll get a bit of a tour here. So this is the LCD display. It says, uh, this is the first screen. It says Luke's watch winder. It says the date and the time. Now this date and time come from GPS. So it's synced to an atomic clock. The GPS chip is inside. Here it says right now that the GPS is off, but that we do have a quality fix. If you zoom in a little bit, there's a oh, QF. I was zoomed in. Yeah. So QF um, means quality fix. So if you, if you zoom out, then there's four buttons. Each has a different purpose. This button here turns the motor on and off. This button here goes through the different menus, and then these two buttons toggle the different options. And now this dial here is to adjust the speed of the watch. So we'll go through the menus, and I'll turn the, turn the unit on. So on this menu here, you can turn on and off the lights, um, so in case you want to sleep or whatever. Um, now this button here will turn the GPS on. So if I push this button, the GPS will wake itself. So it wakes itself and um, it basically dumps all the bad data it has and then after 30 seconds or so, it will be online. Um, so let's go through the other menu here. The next menu here says the GPS information. So this is hard coded into the device. So there's 30 seconds wake, awake time. That means that basically every 24 hours, the GPS will wake itself up and it'll stay awake for 30 seconds. And it'll take 30 seconds to wake itself up. So these are all parameters that were required to uh, be able to use the GPS chip properly. Next screen shows the GPS information. So right now we're locked onto nine satellites. We're at an altitude of 393 meters. And daylight savings time is off. And we're in a negative seven time zone. So, if I push the different buttons here, which I'm not going to do, you can put daylight savings time on or off, and you can also go through all the time zones, including Newfoundland, at negative 3.5. So keep going here. Next menu is the watch control. So this is where um, you can change what mode the motor goes, and also the speed. So if I turn the dial, you'll notice that the, the RPM speed is going to go down. Right now the motor is not turning. So the bottom value that says how many turns we've done so far isn't, um, isn't moving. So I put this back at 1 RPM. Now if I go through the modes, um, I can have, let's see here, oh, it's this button here. So you can have double mode, interleave mode, and micro step mode. So we'll come back to these modes after when I turn the device on. The next menu here just shows us how much memory we're using, or not how much, how much memory is free actually. 303 bytes. Um, and there's one other part of the menu I think I must have missed here. Here, this one, it's the watch information. So here you put in what direction you want the watch to rotate, and whether in a period, whether you want to be an all day rotation at minimum speed, or you want to start at 8 in the morning at maximum speed, or you can do a schedule. This is the rotational speed in turns per day, 1440, and you can turn it down and it'll adjust down to 600, about. I'll turn the watch on now. Uh, I'll go to the main menu here. 
And I'm going to turn the, it's going one RPM. So I'll wait till the needle gets to the top, just for illustration. And then I will uh, push go. So now the watch winder is turning at one uh, RPM. So every minute it's going to go around once. Coincidentally, of course, the uh, needle here on the watch is also going one RPM because it's a watch. And so the way that it's set up now, the needle, the seconds needle just stays up all the time, which is kind of neat. Um, so if I go through the menu here, back to the motor control, um, I can turn the speed up and down. So if I turn the speed down, it will slow down. It can even go quite slow. I got a little bit of sound, uh, a little bit, quite a large sound. I'm going to work on uh, getting that down. Put the speed back up, um, and then if you change modes here, it'll, depending on what period you set, it'll speed up or, or, or slow down and change the direction. Some watches only wind one way. Um, and then if I change the modes here, it might speed up significantly. So this mode here, I think there's too much torque on the motor. It doesn't work as well as it used to before I hooked it all up. So this one here is 8 to 2200. So between 8 and 10 p.m., 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., it'll go the minimum speed it needs to to achieve the proper turns per day, which is 1440. Switch that back to all day. Oh, all day, here we go. Keep going through the menu. Here's where we change the motor mode. So now we're on single step. This is a stepper motor inside. So if I change the mode, oh, I moved menus here, sorry. Okay, if I put us in double mode, the motor works slightly different, not much. If I do interleave, it goes much, much finer steps. Um, and then finally, micro stepping, which is quite loud, but it does a nice smooth motion. So I'll turn micro stepping on now. Oh, single, sorry, double, interleave, micro step. So micro step, you can hear it. You can hear how loud it is, but it definitely moves nice and fluid. Um, Now, of course, it wouldn't be great to sleep with this sound, but uh, trial and error. Okay, so if I switch the mode here, I just change it away, and then it'll actually speed up a fair bit when I put it here in this. So this is about full speed um, in micro-stepping mode. So if you had a dog, it'd probably be going crazy right now, but. It's, uh, this is actually pulsed with modulating a stepper motor to make it go like this. So anyway, if I turn the motor off with this button here, it'll stop, but then in micro-stepping, um, this is one bug I gotta work out, is that the motor actually is braking right now if the motor's not off. So that's one kink to work out, is that it's still using energy. The watch winder uses about six watts of power um, in peak consumption, which isn't too bad. So, yeah. Just gonna try to shut this thing up here. Oh, here we go. Depending on the mode, um, it should be quiet here. Anyway, that's about it. So, uh, you can see the side view here, in the back, and the edges are very sharp, I've cut myself several times. I wouldn't advise it around small kids. Anyway, that's all.